Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and today we are going to make a charm pack quilt with a free pattern. I went on a retreat. I had a ton of fun and I happened upon some charm squares. I also won a charm square. I think it was at the retreat as a matter of fact. And this is it. It is called Bliss. And I think, let's see, let me see who it's by. It is by Moda Three Sisters. I always like the Three Sisters fabrics. I went looking for a pattern that I could use to use these charm squares. And I just happened upon Charm Pack Cherry quilt pattern on the Fat Quarter Shop. It's perfect. There aren't any half square triangles. And the reason I don't want half square triangles is I want to do this quickly. The past few patterns that I've done have been fun, but they haven't been super fast. Today I want super fast, super easy. And that is exactly what this pattern is going to give me. The pattern calls for two solids, and two prints. I have two solids. I have one print. So I am going to cut some five inch squares all by myself. I went into my stash and I found this. Let me pull it out of the bag. I believe I got this at Busy Lady. This particular fat quarter bundle is by Moda Fabrics. Cory Yoder Beautiful Day. I'm hoping that these are going to, I'm sure, this hair will be going up very soon. I'm hoping this charm pack and this fat quarter bundle will coordinate well enough that I can cut up my fat quarter bundle and use it with this pattern. So let's take a look. This pattern calls for 72 five inch squares that are solid and 72 five inch squares that have a print. I have 42 of these. And so I only need 30 more of these. And then we'll get started on the pattern, on the pattern. Let me cut up my fat quarters. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. And then we'll get started on the pattern. First, I would like to take a minute to thank you all for watching and do a couple call outs for people who have made comments or whose friend I met at the quilt retreat. So Jenny Blattner, Kathy Kay was so much fun. And when she comes into town, I hope we get to get together. We get to get to get together. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I would also like to do a shout out to Beverly DeWitt. I hope that even though you're not sewing, you have a great time with your family. Thank you for watching. Now that I've pressed my fabrics and I kind of um, feel those words burn when they come back up, I'm gonna blame Di from Sister Chicks because she's trying to instill good quilting practices in me, I am resisting. I'm doing my best not to conform. So here are my fat quarters. I am going to cut them. If my quilt math is correct, I should be able to get 12 five square patches out of each of these fat quarters. So let's check my math. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the selvage at the bottom because it should be the straightest. I'm going to line up the selvage and the edge. This is not the sharpest tool in my shed.
and a little bit more to go in my jar. We are ready to go. Disclaimer, I'm going to try and follow this pattern. It might get a little tedious. It might not. I just read through the directions really quickly. But if it doesn't end up that I follow the pattern exactly as far as how I use my solids and my prints, I'm not going to get my panties in a wad. I think it's going to look good no matter how I do it. So that is my disclaimer. All right. Assemble two five inch print squares and one solid. Maxine is here to help me. Okay, two five inch print squares, one solid. So we have a solid in the middle and a five on each side. A solid in the middle and a five on each side. I need to do 23 of these. Next, assemble two five inch solid squares and one print. Solid nine patch strip should measure five by 14. Repeat 23 more times, make 24. I ran into a little issue. There's a little spot. I don't know if it's a burn spot, but it was under the packaging. So I didn't even see it. And it starts kind of, I don't know, halfway through, maybe not even halfway. I'm not gonna worry about it. Hopefully it will come out in the wash. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm still going to use that fabric. I have my rows all put together, not like sewn, but I have them set the way I want them. I'm going to go sew my rows together. I'm going to do major chain piecing. I am going to press them, die, and I will be right back. I have sewn the solid center with the print on each side and the printed center with the solid on each side. Now, I did it wrong. Okay, so I want one of these in the center. And two of these on the top and bottom. Because my solid should be here here, here, here. Make sense to you? Here, I have sewn all of my nine patches where I have the solid print solid in the center. Now, I bet you can guess what comes next. But let's make sure. Assemble two solid nine patch strips and one nine patch strip where the solid, let's get it here. Okay, so you've got solids here. You've got prints on the outside in the middle. And then solid print solid on the top and bottom. Let me show you a secret. When I sewed the three patches together, I pressed all of them the same way. I'm not particular. I don't care if it goes this way or this way, so I can always nest my seams. So here I have this one. Both seams are going that way. Here's this one, and both seams are going that way. So they nest within one another, just like that. If I had an issue and they were both going that way, 
I would just flip one of them the opposite way because my print's still gonna be on the outside of the solid or my solid's still gonna be on the inside of the print. Just a little trick. I also found that when I clipped the seams nested instead of just letting them ride and a pin will do the same thing I got much better results as far as my points matching. So let me go put these together and I'll be right back. Here is my nine patch. I have five inch squares that I cut. I have five inch squares from other companies. So every block is not exactly the same. I'm gonna line them up on the seams. And then what I'm going to do is take my ruler and go to seven inches in the most logical spot. In this case, I'm lining up a line where my seam is, and then here is where I'm going to line up my seven inches. Now this goes a little over, that's okay. I will trim that up later. I know my seven inch line is here. And I know that I don't have my trimmer. Here we go. Okay. Boy, I hope it did that right. Okay, so here we've got seven by 14. Let me get these all cut out and I'll be back and we'll see what's next. Once I cut all of my nine patches in half, I went back through and put my seven inch mark on the inside of the block and then trimmed the outside where I had pieces that weren't always even. And this gives me nice straight lines to work with. I have cut these down in the center, assemble one print half block and one solid half block. Gray, gray, gray. Okay, and then here's gray, gray, gray. So I should have a print and a solid together. And I need to make eight of those. So let's just do that quickly. So here's one, two, eight. Okay, so I'll take these over to the sewing machine. Now, assemble one solid half block unit. So this is my solid half block unit. But I'm supposed to do it this way. So I need to turn this this way. So I've got solid, 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 solid. That's gray. And then I'm supposed to match it up with my print and my print has a print here, here, and here. So these will be matched up this way and I need eight of those. Honestly, I can just stack them like that and I should be good to go. So let me go sew these blocks together and I'll be right back. I have sewn all my blocks together and I've put them in rows just like the pattern called for. Now you would think that you could just flip these any way you want, which you probably could. But if you want to follow the pattern, then your solid has to be in a particular spot. So on this row, 
you have your solid and your solid and your print and your print that touch each other. So if you were to flip this over, your prints would be touching each other and your solid would be touching and that would not be right. So the top row is made up of the first block where the half squares are in the middle. And your second row is made up of the block where your half squares are on the outsides. Same rule applies. Solid, print, print, solid, solid, print. Now I want a little bit more length on mine. So I took what I had left over from my fat quarters I took the wider pieces and put them across the top and the bottom. I tried to do wider all the way around, but I didn't have enough. So I took what was left over and just cut it in half. So I've got a border on the side. It's just half as wide as the border going across the top and the bottom. So I'm going to sew all this together and I'll be back and show you the finished quilt. Here it is right before I add the borders. So I've put this whole thing together. You can still see the yellow dots, but I'm hoping when I wash it after I quilt it, that those will come out. My mother-in-law thought ketchup. They kind of look like a burn to me. Regardless, we'll try and get them out. So I've got my skinny borders on this side and that side. I've got the wider borders on the top and the bottom. Let me finish it up and then I'll tell you the design that I'm going to use to quilt it. My quilt top is complete. So now I'm going to take it to my long arm and use figure eights and quilt it. So let's see what it looks like when I'm done. Have I got a surprise for you. I quilted my quilt. Now I haven't put the binding on yet, but I did use a figure eight all over quilt pattern. And my backing is this. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Eat some chocolate and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. This particular fat. Excuse me. Wool, wool, wool. Just, just give me time. I'll, I'll, I'll. I don't know what I'll do. So I am going to go to the sewing machine, and I'm going to make twenty-four rows of five patches with three. Oh my gosh, why am I making this so hard? I'm going to go in. So the three patches.